As promised, this is a challenge video, and in this one, you'll be setting up two endpoints that allow someone to fetch multiple tasks or a single task by ID. Down below, I have the challenge comments. Big picture goal, set up the task reading endpoints. The first step is to create the endpoint that allows you to fetch all tasks. Now, later on in the class, when we add authentication in, we'll limit this to being able to fetch all tasks that you actually created. If I, as my account, create a task, you, as another account, shouldn't be able to read it. We're not worrying about any of that for now, but I wanted to mention it's something we'll get into later. So you're going to set up one endpoint for fetching all of the tasks, then another for fetching a single task by its ID, similar to what we did in the last video for users. Then you'll use Postman to test your work, set up new requests for both of those endpoints, fire things off, and make sure you're getting the correct results. With the second endpoint, make sure to test it with a valid ID and an invalid ID, ensuring that you're getting the expected results in both scenarios. Take some time to knock that out, test your work, and when you're done, come back and click play. How'd that go? Let's go ahead and jump right in by starting with the endpoint that's going to fetch all of the tasks. Right here, that'll be app.get to set it up, and the path is forward slash tasks. Now from here, we're going to set up our callback function with request and response, and the first thing we're going to do is use the task model and access its find method. In this case, we're not actually trying to limit it by any criteria, we want to fetch everything, so we're not going to put any attributes on the object. From here, we can set up our call to then, and we'll get access to the tasks that were found. Now, it's going to be an array, but it might be an empty array if you don't have any tasks. What are we going to do? We're just going to send them back using response.send, send the tasks. Next up, down below, we want to make sure to handle errors when things go wrong. We'll set up that catch call. Right here, we're going to provide the callback function. And in this case, we'll just send back a 500. So response dot status 500, then we'll go ahead and use send. So that's going to take care of the tasks route. Let's go ahead and test that before moving on to the next one. Over inside of Postman, I'm going to add a new request to our collection. I'll call this read tasks plural, I'm going to create the new route. I'll go ahead and save my old one first. Then I'll crack open read tasks and set up the URL, localhost port 3000 forward slash tasks. And if I go ahead and fire that off, what do I get? Down below, I get all of the tasks I've created so far. So that is it for the first route. Let's go ahead and knock out the second one. That'll be another call to app.get, this time providing a path that also contains one of those route parameters. So up above, we had used one for this route, and we'll do the same thing down below. So the route is forward slash tasks, forward slash colon ID, and once again, getting the request and the response. And the first thing we're going to do is extract that ID. Const ID equals request dot params dot ID. And from here, we can go ahead and use the find by ID method on task. That is task dot find by ID, providing the ID as the first and only argument. Then we call that right here. We'll go ahead and set up that callback function. And if it did work, we will get the task. Now it could also work and we don't get a task. So we want to make sure to set up that conditional logic once again. Right here, if there is no task, what are we going to go ahead and do? We will use return to stop the function execution and we'll send a 404 back. Response.status 404, then we'll use send. And next up, this is only going to run if there was a task. In that case, we want to send that back with the 200 status code response.send task. Excellent. The only thing we need to do is handle other errors that come up using catch right here. 
we're going to go ahead and just send back the 500 once again. Response.status 500.send perfect. Now we're all done. We can move on to the final step, which is to test our work. So I'm going to remove the challenge comments. We have our two routes in place and over inside of Postman, we'll test out the second one. That's going to require us to create a brand new request in our collection. I'll call this read task singular, and we'll go ahead and set up the URL. I'll make sure to save my old one, crack open the new request and start to fill this out. That'll be localhost on port 3000 forward slash tasks forward slash the ID. Now I can grab one of the task IDs I had over here. I'll go ahead and grab the one for the task eat lunch. I'm going to take the ID, bring it over to the other request tab and paste it right in. Now, if I go ahead and fire this off, what do I get? I get my 200 and I get my task showing up with description of eat lunch. Now let's change this. I'll change the leading five in the ID over to something else like a one. This should result in a 404 and that is exactly what we get. No task was found with this ID, which is correct. So now that we have this in place, we have the resource endpoints for creating resources and for reading them. That leaves just two left, the ability to update our resources and the ability to delete resources. Let's go ahead and continue on in the next lecture.